Hi, it's Ryan Moody here, helping you to fish smarter, not harder. In this week's blog post, I'm going to show you how you can gang your own hooks and how you can customise them to suit different baits for different applications. With mackerel season uh, around the corner, well actually we're coming up to the prime period now in northern Queensland. Uh, everyone will be out chasing these critters and drifting out baits in the current with ganged hooks is one of the most popular techniques getting around. So I'm going to touch base on a few of the uh, uh, issues regarding ganged hooks and the sizes you should be using. Now, how many times have you been out there? Um, you've gone past the tackle shop quickly, you've realised you've got no ganged hooks, you go in, you grab those ones off the wall, those uh, cheap flimsy ones like so, and you get out there, you get a good mackerel on, you get it halfway to the boat and the hooks open up. If the eye opens up, well they straighten. Now that happened to me once a long time ago, like many other anglers I'm sure. So what I did straight away was come up with an idea that would uh, solve those issues and that simply was make your own ganged hooks. Now what I do like to do is use a much better quality hook. Uh, these are the double seven double sixes from um, Mustard and also Eagle Claw have them as well and they are the 6026 uh, models under Eagle Claw. The, they're a forged hook um, which means you can open the eyes up a little bit on them without breaking them. Um, this, these kind of things, customising gang hooks, don't work if it's stainless. Stainless steel is very brittle and you'll try and open the eyes and they'll crack and split off every time. So it's always best to do it with the forged hooks and don't open the eyes right up. You only need to open them up a very small bit just to get that barb through. Okay, so what we're going to do next, I've showed you the type of hook I like to use. Um, simply because It also has a very good bite in it. Um, it has a very wide gape and which is great because it allows those fish to get that further inside the mouth when they grab it. That's why I like using double seven, double six. The tools required to gang hooks depends on the size of them of course. These uh, pliers are fantastic. You can find these kind of things on many pliers. These uh, spines here, they, uh, they are what open up the eyes of your hooks. So simply all you have to do is sit the eye of the hook over the, the right size one and squeeze down on it. Now these kind of things there we go, it's opened up just that tiny little bit. These kind of things are good for hooks up to certain sizes. Probably around about the size of an 8 or 9 o double seven, double six. After that, bigger game fishing hooks and things like that are a little bit hard to open with sets of pliers like this. So that's when you have to change over to a soft block of timber. And for that kind of stuff I keep three size punches available for the size hooks and hammer of course. So I've showed you how to open the eyes with the set of pliers but now I'm going to show you how to do it with a block of timber. What I like to do is hold the hook into the block of timber, put the barb in there and hold it, hold it flat like so and then grab the appropriate punch just a little bit more Perfect, just open that eye up, just that little tiny bit. So, of course that's a small hook, you would probably still be able to do it with these pliers, but if you're going to use big game fishing hooks or 9 and 10 uh, double seven, double sixes for really big Spaniards, that's when you'd use the block of timber in your punch. Now, I'm going to show you how to assemble them together. What we've done is we've opened the eyes on two of them and we've left one with the eye closed. And of course that is the leading hook that you're going to attach your wire to. So first up, we grab that one. Uh, then we grab another one with the eye open. So the one with the eye open, we go down through the back with the leading hook, pushing straight through. Always bring your barb to the opening in the hook. That always helps you get it through a lot easier. So there we go, we're, we're through there now. Simply close him up by locking in that into one of the grooves in your pliers and just a nice little push down like so. That crimps it back in nice and neat. Just remember, don't open them right up really wide, just enough. And then we've got the last hook here. Simply, same again, hold him like that. This hook comes down, the barb facing the open eye, through the back there like that, and slip him on. Same thing, close him on up. Okay, beautiful. 
there you have it. That's the perfect size for a big pilly or a nice size gar for Spanish mackerel. Now, if you're using long shank hooks, you might have a whole heap of them at home. Now they do work pretty well as well, of course. Uh, trouble is they don't quite have the freedom and flexibility of a hook that has a wider gape on it. So what you do in this instance is simply use a swivel in between each hook. And that's what these, uh, these true, this true turn rig is. It's got the swivels on each uh, hook going to the shanks. Now what you must do though is when you buy the swivels, make sure that they won't slide over the barbs. That's the most important thing. If you can slide them over the barb, that means they're a little bit too big. So what we're going to do now is show you how to rig these up. The only difference is when you rig these up, the leading hook at the front, you have to open the eye up on it too in order to get the swivel on. Now here's a couple I've prepared earlier. What I did was I've opened the eye on the first one and what I've done, I've slid the swivel all the way down the shank right down so it's sitting there in the gape of the hook. I've also grabbed the rear hook and I've put the swivel on on the eye only then closed it up so that it can't slide down the shank, it's stuck in the eye. Okay, so I've done those two, I've done the front and rear hook and then what we do is grab the centre hook, we've got the eye open on it and the first thing we're going to do is grab the rear one and I'm going to slide that swivel on and I'm going to push it around the shank and come down the back of the hook like so. And then simply through that same hole what we do is grab this swivel on the leading hook, the one that's stuck on the shank, and then what we do is slide it on, then we close this eye up, and then we have it. We've got the longer shanked hooks, very pliable, unlikely to tangle during the hookup. But if you didn't have those swivels on there, quite often they do tangle up and they make it harder to catch the fish. Now, next we're going to talk about the sizes. Um, I know some guys up here in North Queensland that really like to use uh, just the doubles as um, using half pilchards for, for things like mangrove jack. You just put half a good size pilchard. They're six O's. You could probably go down to the smallest four O's and just use two. Uh, that's just for bite sized pieces of pilchard. Uh, that's a very um, popular um, way of fishing for mangrove jack up here. Uh, if you, you could probably do the same thing for snapper as well, those kind of fish, any demersal fish that forages that likes pilchards. The reason why we like to use pilchards in demersal situations is because it's soft and the fish bite through it a lot quicker. Fish like gar, which is a little bit tougher, are better off kept for your Spanish mackerel, fish with really sharp teeth that crash the bait hard. They slice right through it and reach the hooks. So always use pillies um, when you, you're, uh, you, you're using baits for demersal fish. We also use uh, pilchards with mono in front of it with a sinker for um, fish like barchi, coral trout, nanny guy, those kind of things up here in North Queensland. Bottom fishing, as long as you're away from the reef. If you're fishing an open bit of rubble or a wonky hole or something like that, where well, you're not going to snag up all the time, that's an also a very popular rig. And it's very good for the trout because this is the kind of rig you put down on the bottom. You don't suspend it. You simply put a sinker on front and your mono leader from there on. And that way the pilchard sits down on the bottom and trout are a bottom feeder. They love picking stuff off the bottom. Your nanny guy and those sort of things are a bit higher where dropper rigs work better with single hooks but this is a great setup for chasing bar cheek trout. Any coral trout for that matter. Now we've spoken about some of the smaller hooks for using half pilchards for some of your demersal fish and down in the smaller sizes. But if you wanted to use gar or very long pilchards, big pilchards for bigger fish like Spanish mackerel, dog tooth tuna, all those kind of things that uh, take a drifted bait very well, all those pelagics, you would probably go to 8-0 hooks, possibly even 9 O's, and you would use 3 and you can even use four or five gangs. It's up, entirely up to you. That's what I mean. You can customize it to suit. If you're using small wolf herring around that, that sort of size, you can gang six, six hooks together. So the beauty of getting into this habit of making your own gangs is you get used to the different ways of customizing them to suit different fish uh, methods at different times. So better look at the size of the hooks you need and the amount of them. We're just going to have a quick look now at a couple of examples and we're going to compare it. There's the uh, very small pilchard. That's a very average size pilchard. And 
I would say three of these 6.0s is about perfect because don't forget the pilly goes through the eye socket there in the first hook. That's where it ends up. And what you do is you lay that down the side and you can see that that rear hook is going to go in about an inch back from the tail, which is perfect for that length of bait. Now, we'll show you how to, to put it on while we're doing this. So what we've done is we've laid that down there. We've got the shank of the first hook in the eye, laid it down here, which means that rear hook is going to go through there about an inch back. So what we're going to do, mark that spot, the rear hook, we're going to go through the side of the body, like so. Then this one comes up and it goes about the middle of the body, straight through there, twist him around, and then the last one, straight through the eye, like so. Your hooks sit inside the bait nice and neat. That pilly is a bit tatty, of course, but that's about the average size of a small one. If you had a bigger pilly, you can go an extra hook. Or, simply, you can go up to using three of the larger size gangs. They're eight O's. So it all comes down to the size of the pilly and the size of the fish you're trying to catch. Uh, although, if you wanted to use a bigger pilcher than this and you put the extra 6.0 on, it's just as effective as having the three 8.0s. So a big Spaniard is still going to find it hard to straighten these 6.0s because they're a very good hook. Um, but when you go up to a bigger bait again, like this gar, this is what I would definitely use for Spaniards only. That, that kind of bait there would be good for grey mackerel, small Spaniards. Even a big Spaniard will still eat it out in the burley trail. But now I'm going to show you the bigger hooks. What we do, we lay our gar out. Same thing, we're going to look down here. The shank of the first hook, that's got to be right in the eye socket. So then we lay this down here like so. And we mark where the rear hook's got to go. Center of the body. Actually, some people also, you can go up through into the middle of the body from the bottom. But I'm going to do it traditionally. I'm just going to go through the side of the body. Same again. The second hook at the center and around. And then this hook lines up nicely to go in the eye. Like so. So the final hook, it's gone through the eye. I've snapped the bib off, the garfish, and um, yeah, basically th that's your rig. With your, you'll have your wire on the end going to your snap swivel. And the best thing to do, instead of casting these straight out the back of a boat with the current, throw it out to the side of your boat and you let them come around with the current into your burley trail, if you've got a burley trail going. But even when throwing it out to the side, what it does, it allows it to sink down a little bit because sometimes the fish are a bit lower. So that's always a good habit to get into. Don't just throw them straight out the back of your boat. Throw them out to the sides. And quite often they'll actually get hit as it's floating around. And just another tip, the reason why I snapped that bib off, I could probably trim it back a bit more, is simply if it's a big long bib sticking out there, sometimes it'll catch the current and want, your bait might want to spin. So we always trim the, bib, uh, the bill down off the garfish. So in closing, it all comes down to the, the size of the hooks you need to use, the length of hooks you need to suit that particular bait for that application that you're using. So it's all up to you to play around with the size of the hooks and that. You might like more hooks of a smaller size or just a few bigger hooks when it comes to getting outside chasing some of those bigger fish. So if you did like this little tip and you'd like to see more, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and if you only want some tips that I send out by email only, head on over to our website www.ryanmoodyfishing.com and sign up for free email updates. Get into the great outdoors, keep fishing smarter, and I'll see you next time.